Hey everyone, XGMXHQ here. Today we're going to be reading over the patch notes for ESO's 9.1.2 update. That's coming in August. Let's see what they have to say. The Elder Scrolls Online V9.2, sorry, 9.1.2 includes a few balanced adjustments for combat abilities and item sets. Yes, they released a update probably a couple of weeks ago at this point, and I completely dropped the ball on that one and did not cover 9.1.0 but i'll make it up to y'all and i'll uh, cover this one instead this is one of the bigger uh mid patches during a pts cycle that they actually do make some changes various fixes for quests ui housing and other base game content we also added a new option to preview furnishing placements directly from housing editor and our testing Witches Festival event this week. I'm gonna skip over the Witches Festival event and we're gonna jump straight into the combat and ability changes for week. I believe this is week two. Fix an issue where the final hit of a channeled heavy attacks, lightning and restoration, were not considered channeled attacks despite totally being channeled attacks. Okay, great fix. Herald of the Tome, Fate Carver, fix an issue where this ability in a s'mores could fail to return as a channeled or damage over time effect in some cases. That's very interesting considering most people use Deadly Strike with that. Wonder if that was affecting it as well. Nightblade, Shadow, Veiled Strike, Surprise Attack. Reduce the cooldown of the guaranteed critical strike on this morph to 3 seconds down from 4. So you need to be able to critical strike a little bit more often. That's perfect. Nightblades do not need a buff, but here we are getting buffs. It's fine. Everything's fine. Concealed weapon. This morph now grants major berserk for 7 to 10 seconds based on rank rather than a unique 7 to 10% damage done when meeting its conditions. Okay. Um, I'm fine with this. We've been relatively happy with how these morphs have enabled melee-centric nightblades, but we're seeing a lot of behaviors where concealed is being used more passively than we'd like. Yeah, that's that's more than fair. Rather than targeting the duration at this point, we're moving forward with changing the bonus to a named buff rather than a unique one to try to train try to rein in the upper bounds of the morph. We'll still be keeping a close eye on this morph since there's plenty of feedback about the incentives it causes. So please continue to discuss. In addition to these adjustments, we're also trying to hit on some of the feedback we've seen where a surprise attack feels weaker than concealed in too many areas. So we're conservatively buffing up the damage potential as we find a stable spot for concealed. Yeah, concealed weapon is consistently used passively in PvE and PvP. Um, and I think it's going to continue to be used passively, but in this particular case, it will be most likely be used more offensively it's not a bad skill at all uh surprise attack honestly as well for a gank blade run around zero the fact that it's now down to three seconds i mean hell yeah i'm in sorcerer storm calling overload fix an issue where this ultimate and its morphs light and heavy attacks did not properly interact with bound armaments stacking behavior the light attacks now always grant one stack and the heavy attacks will now always grant one stack every tick Okay, so, fair enough. Don't really have much to say about that. Weapons, destruction stuff. Okay, this could be interesting. Ancient knowledge. Based on player feedback, we've readjusted the bonuses granted for these staff types to fit more into their theme, while moving to be more generic amplification so more builds can easily derive meaningful power without intense specialization. All right, I'm going to read what the changes were, but I really hope that they do focus in. Last changes, I, I, I didn't really agree with those. Inferno Staffs, now increase your damage done with damage over time effects by, oh my, 6 to 12% rather than the initials hit the status effects by 250 by 500. Holy shit. Uh, DK Inferno Staff, anybody? PvP build, yeah, okay. Yep. All right, testing on PTS. Lightning staves. Now increase your damage done with direct damage and channeled effects by 6 to 12% rather than damage over time and channeled abilities. 
Okay, so direct damage and channeled effects rather than damage over time and channeled effects. Okay, so they basically took damage over time, threw it at Inferno, and then they put direct damage and channeled effects on Lightning. So Templar and Arcanist are still definitely going to be leaning towards the Lightning staves in some cases, but then the direct damage. So Sorcerer maybe as well, considering they do have the frags, you know, Crushing Shock. Ellie weapon. Interesting. Actually, that's... This could be a really, really good change. I'm here for it. I'm going to do some change, uh, some testing on live and PTS. And see what the changes to Inferno stav staves will do for a DK in PvE. Between Inferno staves and dual wield. Alright, let's read the developer comment. We've been keeping a close eye on this passive in particular since it's received larger changes comparatively to other weapon passives. We originally set out to create bonuses that would help make each staff type unique compared to other weapon bonuses, but much of the feedback we've seen focused on how the adjustments felt disjointed from the typical play patterns and elemental fantasies these weapons focus on, while also being a bit niche, mainly Inferno staff. As such, we simplified the bonus while focusing on the elementals, uh, elemental types main fantasies. Inferno staves will focus on enhancing your damage over time effects to burn your foes to cinders, while lightning staves focus on amping up your burst and channel damage to zap enemies to dust. It is our hope that these bonuses are less restrictive to their effects, so more builds can meaningfully interact with them while feeling like they still have some uniqueness and build opportunities to min-max around without the niche interaction we imposed with our further with our first pass. Honestly, great change. It's good to see Zealous is listening uh, to player feedback, because that was my initial reaction as well, to see if Furnos only increase the initial hit of status effects by 500. That ain't doing anything for anybody. Uh, so Inferno states are effectively dead in the water. Uh, but now, with this change, damage over time effects, I'm in. And even, honestly, night blades with lightning staves? Direct damage, merciless resolve? That could be interesting as well. Alright, moving on here, we have weakness to elements. Elemental susceptibility. Fix an issue where the concussed and chilled status effects applied from this morph could be treated as damage over time in some cases and could fail to interact with sets such as Baron Zodris. Alright, so I'm going to be testing Baron Zodris as well on the PTS. Baron Zodris is honestly a sleeper set for a lot of tanks that just want to build ulti quickly. Arena Weapons. Merciless Charge. This set now increases your damage done with direct damage attacks by 9.3% of your weapon or spell damage, up to a maximum of 560, rather than increasing your damage done with all two-handed attacks by 11.16% of your weapon or spell damage with no maximum. Before I comment on this, I just want to see what the developer has to say. Our first pass with this set was meant to grant a reward mechanism that was more impactful and less buggy than its current damage over time effect seen on the live servers. We tried finding a bonus that was less generic and more interactive with some build opportunities and synergy where you could use it passively on your back bar or dig in and carve through your foes on your front bar too. Unfortunately, the first pass created situations where the reward incentivized you to often replace your existing skills with more two-handing skills rather than just help you use it on the front bar enabler, or use it as a front bar enabler. In order to alleviate this, we've adjusted the bonus to be slightly more generic in amplifications. This bonus continues to synergize with the ability that activates the bonus, as well as vast majorities of the two-hand skill line itself, retaining your ability to go all in with build crafting while opening up what skills you slot to diversify that build craft. With these adjustments, we've also slightly lowered the bonus to make up for the fact that you can now enhance it with more damage sources and put a cap on the scaling to limit its scaling potential. I think that's fair. Uh, Merciless Resolve definitely did channel you in to a certain play style. Um, that being said, there was 
the potential for a pretty strong all two-handed uh, PvP build in play. Uh, whether or not this changes that, I think it could st still definitely be effective. But there's also the fact that now if you, let's say, run it on a Nightblade, you could have Merciless Resolve on that bar. Increasing Merciless Resolve on a crit by 9.3% hits just that much harder. I, I think that's definitely a promising change there. And now we're moving on to bug fixes. I mean, it, yeah, it basically just seems like a lot of quest fixes and that kind of jazz, art and animation, events and celebration, Telvani secret, fix an issue rare, yeah. I think that's pretty much all the feedback that really matters. Uh, in the future, guys, I'm going to try to go over more PTS and even live server changes, depending on what's in them. And hopefully next time there's a major PTS update, I don't drop the ball. But if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. Go ahead and subscribe. Do all that thing. All those things. I greatly appreciate it. I'm XGamexHQ. Y'all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye for now.